Hello there my fellow notebook aficionados and welcome back to the channel. As you can see we once again traded our tiny little studio for a little bit of a different location and I'm actually in Arizona Phoenix because Intel invited us to have an early look at their new Pentalic notebook silicon. So they not only give us an early insight into what the new platform will bring to the table for all kinds of notebooks, but they also invited us to have a look inside their production facilities, so we can get like a little bit of a glimpse into how CPUs are actually made. So... <laughs> so sit back, relax, I need to get out of the seat because it's smoking hot in Arizona right now and let's get into it. All right, good people, we made it back from Arizona and it's actually been a few days since we have seen everything Intel had to show in Phoenix. So I had some time to properly digest all the information and put everything in order to tell you whether you should actually care about Team Blue's upcoming laptop CPUs and integrated GPUs. And spoiler alert, I'm cautiously optimistic, especially since I have actually been quite a fan of what Lunar Lake has been able to bring to the table for Fin and Light notebooks. So how about we start with the basics and I tell you what Pentalake actually is and where you will most likely encounter the new platform when laptops featuring the new silicon hit the market in early 2026. Pentalake is the successor of both Lunar Lake and Arrow Lake H, hopefully combining the strengths of both CPU families while also mitigating their individual disadvantages. And that means building up on the efficiency gains and impressive iGPU performance of Lunar Lake and combining it with the higher core count and overall CPU performance of Arrow Lake. The secret source to achieve that would be Intel's all new manufacturing process called 18A, which apparently would be comparable to a 2 nanometer node which competing companies like TSMC are working on. And which is also the reason we have been to Arizona, since Fab52, which is located at Intel's Ocatillo site, is currently one of only two manufacturing plants being able to fabricate those juicy new wafers. While we have been able to peek inside that very plant, unfortunately we have not been allowed to capture any form of footage and while it was very interesting to see the insides of the place, the actual manufacturing process is still happening in very big machines, so you would not be able to see a lot anyways. The new process will deliver the CPU part of the new chips and will apparently do the heavy lifting when it comes to the overall performance and especially efficiency gains, while Intel's hybrid approach will in turn allow for the flexibility that is needed to cater to a wide range of devices. In general, the new silicon will be divided into three main groups and as per usual, we will see multiple SKUs and versions within each main family. All three product groups will share the overall package and the same new improved NPU for AI workloads, which should make it relatively easy for OEMs to offer multiple variants across a wide range of designs. The entry into the Pentalake family will be the 8-core, which similar to Lunar Lake offers a 4-performance and 4-low-power E-core configuration alongside the new XE3 GPU in its smallest iteration. The 16-core variant scales things up across the board, especially on the compute side of things, with the addition of 8 efficiency cores, general improvements when it comes to memory speeds and additional PCIe lanes. And considering Intel keeps the same small new iGPU, you will most likely see those CPUs combined with dedicated GPUs. So this is basically the Aerolic H successor for notebooks like the Cephalus G16 for example. The most interesting chip though will be the 16-core combined with Intel's new flagship built-in GPU that triples the core count of the more basic variants, while still offering the CPU performance potential combined with even higher memory speeds. While we do not have any additional information for individual variants within these three main families for now, I would expect the 8-core to be used in mainstream and budget options, which is great since you will hopefully be able to take advantage of the new architecture without spending kidney level money. As I mentioned already, the 16-core with the small iGPU will most likely be reserved for thinner notebooks with dedicated graphics, while the 16-core 12XE will probably find its way into Halo devices, so maybe something like the Zenbook S14, Zenbook Duo or a high-end Lenovo Yoga. The only laptop we have seen in Arizona for now looked very suspiciously close to MSI's new Prestige series. They have teased during Computex already, so I would expect them to be a launch partner as well. 
From what I have seen, we are dealing with a compact 14 inch with a clean and elegant styling, the usual port arrangement for this class of devices and a pretty sleek chassis. And I really can't wait to get some additional info for that one. But let's circle back to the silicon powering it all. And in addition to the all new manufacturing process, Pentalec also bets on new cores to deliver the performance and efficiency promises. And while I won't get into all the technical bits and pieces, Intel promises either a pretty sizable reduction in power draw at similar performance compared to Lunar Lake and Arrow Lake H in single core scenarios or about a 10% increase in performance at the same wattage. At the same time, they aim to drastically improve multi-core capabilities compared to Lunar Lake thanks to the added cores, while offering essentially what we already know from Arrow Lake in terms of performance, albeit at a significantly lower overall power draw. Which actually does not sound too bad if you ask me, since I would argue that we do not necessarily need higher Cinebench scores, but rather quieter and cooler laptops with longer battery life. However, we will have to wait and see how well their slides translate into the real world here. So that's the CPU part, but if you ask me, the GPU will probably be much more interesting and especially the 12 core variant really got me hooked. And just as a bit of a recap, the 140V, which is for now the fastest iGPU on the market, except for Strix Halo of course, is one hell of a capable chip already. And just as a bit of a sanity check, I edited our Razer Blade 18 video exclusively on the Sandbox S14. And while export times can of course not quite keep up with dedicated NVIDIA solutions, the overall editing experience was actually quite decent with our footage. So I'm really looking forward to what the new generation will bring to the table for creators. And Intel also showed some juicy new stuff on the gaming side of things, but more about that in a little bit. At its core, the new XE3 architecture gets, well, new cores. And since those are sitting on a separate GPU tile within the package, they can be implemented in a very flexible way. And I really hope we will also see lower CPU core counts combined with the highest end GPU to give us a similar chip like Lunar Lake, which could be very interesting for super thin computing machines or handhelds, of course. Again, there's a lot of very, very technical things happening beneath the surface. With a new overall core architecture, enhanced ray tracing units and general improvements across the board, which apparently will net us a very solid performance increase even compared to Lunar Lake, while at the same time improving efficiency. So it will be very interesting to see how well you can utilize the additional performance without really sacrificing battery life should you be into casual gaming on the go. And speaking of gaming, Intel is taking a page out of Nvidia's book and with XDSS3 we will also get multi-frame generation for Team Blue powered laptops and handhelds. They gave us an early demo of a new painkiller game to try and while we did not get a frame counter, they showed some live footage on stage running at around 50 FPS natively in Full HD and at around 200 FPS with MFG. In the demo you could see some very, very slight artifacts if you really went looking for them and if you know what to look out for. But considering this was running at an integrated GPU and looked and felt this smooth, well, if you ask me, it's great to have the possibility of tuning your gameplay experience this way, especially since it seems like Intel treats this as a bit of a bonus feature in addition to the increased raw performance capabilities of their new built-in iGPU. Alright folks, I know this is already quite a long video, considering all we have for now is theoretical information, with actual products still being a few months away. But from what I have seen this week, I am carefully optimistic. I do not expect these chips to drastically change the game when it comes to overall CPU performance, at least not when compared to Arrow Lake H. But if they really could make everything quite a bit more efficient, which in turn will hopefully translate to quieter machines with longer battery life, while at the same time giving us an even faster integrated GPU to bridge the gap to entry-level dedicated solutions across a wide range of different form factors and price points, I think Intel can place themselves very well against what Qualcomm has in store with their second gen notebook silicon and against whatever AMD plans for 2026. But that should be it for the initial overview for Pentalake and please make sure to subscribe since I would expect 2026, especially around CES, will be very, very interesting when it comes to notebooks. And if you are interested in what we have to say about everything coming our way, well, I would be honored if you would stick around.
If you have any further questions about Pentalake, sound off below, and I would also love to read what you think about Intel's next-gen mobile silicon. Thanks a ton for watching, folks. My name is Alex, you have been fantastic as always, and I can't wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.